Welcome back to the shop. I'm John Peters. And my last project was this shaker inspired step stool. And instead of filling the countersink holes with round plugs, I filled them with square pegs. This is something I learned way back in the mid eighties at the shop I worked at. We built a lot of furniture out of soft pine, screwing all the projects together and then filling the screw holes with square pegs. I was a little nervous that Cherry's so much harder than pine that I might split the wood, especially near the ends, but I didn't have any problems. So I did have a lot of questions on Instagram and YouTube, so I thought I'd make a video trying to use that square peg method in a few different popular wood species like walnut, white oak, sapili, and cherry. We already know that this method works with cherry, so I'll put that to the side and we'll start with walnut. I've got a mark here at 3 eighths of an inch. That's half the distance between three quarters. So that's a pretty popular measurement. We'll drill one hole here. I used this to make plugs. So I want to make sure that I'm not drilling where plugs are. So we'll drill a hole right here and then we'll put a few out in the middle of the board. And while we're at the drill press, I'll drill the holes in Sapili. and we'll drill the holes in white oak as well. This is a quarter inch brad point drill bit. It's a very sharp drill bit and that's what you want to use to get a nice clean hole. And I've adjusted the drill press to countersink the holes at just about 5 sixteenths of an inch deep. This is the white oak board after I drill the holes. I'll drill one on this side of the board and then slice the board in half so we can measure how deep the hole is. And that's just about 5 sixteenths of an inch deep, giving you enough meat at this part of the board and enough room to drive the peg into the hole. And this is the Sapili board. Now that I have the holes drilled, I'll make the pegs and I'm going to rip the pegs exactly a quarter by quarter inch. Anytime I drive a screw like this, I also drill a pilot hole. So I figured we'll do that as well, just so it's a good representation of the test. Shorter pegs will be less likely to break when you're pounding them in with the hammer. So I'm going to cut these in half. Now you'll take the peg and you're going to whittle a little bit of a point onto it, not too much. And you don't want to go past about 3 sixteenths of an inch. Otherwise the peg would be rounded over near the surface of the wood. So I'm using a utility knife here, 
but you can also use a drum sander. You can kind of set it up to do a few at a time, or you could use a belt sander turned upside down on your work table. But that looks pretty good. Take a little bit more off there. A little bit of glue. And you can hear that that is driven all the way home by the sound of the hammer. Before I cut the peg, I'll remove the glue so it doesn't clog up the teeth of the saw. So that looks pretty good. There's no cracking. You can see I've got a square peg in a round hole. This is the white oak board and this is the one I have probably the most doubts about just because it's so much more dense. And let's see what happens here. Didn't split the board yet. Try this one. I'll remove the glue and then just cut these pegs off on the bandsaw because it's faster. You can see on this corner, it's a little rounded over. So maybe when I was shaping the end of the peg, I shaped up a little too high. Have it over here too. But all in all, pretty good. Last but not least, we'll go with the Sapili. I feel like I don't even need to test it on the middle of the board. If it's not cracking at the ends, then it's not going to crack. So I think that's a pretty good example of how you can use square pegs to fill round holes. I think it's kind of a nice alternative to round plugs and something that you can use for a design element, I guess depending on the project. I used quarter inch trim screws because the holes are not quarter inch trim screws. I used trim screws because the holes are quarter inch. If you're going to use regular screws, you're going to have to drill either a 5 16 or a 3 8 hole. I think that might look a little clunky, but it really depends on the project. And this is the kind of thing that you just want to play around with. Get a few pieces of scrap wood, test it out first before you do something like this on your project. I would like to remind you that I have a ton of good woodworking projects on my website designed to help you build the furniture for your home. And they all have free video tutorials right here on YouTube. So if you'd like to check them out, I'll have a link right here or down in the description below. And I hope one of those projects will inspire you to get out into the shop and make some sawdust. As always, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time. A couple more things I wanted to talk about. Number one, you might know that I started another channel, Today's Craftsman. We posted a video on Saturday morning on table saw insert. This is the cauliflower insert and Jeff explains how you can make this insert to fit over the uh, blade with the riving knife. 
So I'll have a link to that video down in the description. We just posted another video today on to never use the plastic push sticks that come with most table saws. And we give away one of the ones that I use along with a few other things. So I'll have a link to that video as well. If you want to enter that giveaway, just go over there and uh, you can find out about it. And last but not least, actually I got a few things. Over here, I've got a big pile of poplar. If you tuned into the uh, thinking about using Churry to build the sauna, after reading all the comments and doing a little bit more research, I decided to go with poplar. Poplar is one of the 10 most popular woods to use for saunas, so that's what I went with. This is 270 feet of random width, four quarter poplar with a straight line rip. And the total price, including delivery, was $575. So $1.85 a board foot. And I think it was a $150 delivery charge that me and Jeff split because he ordered some red oak. And then one other thing, I started another channel or restarted a channel called uh, Two River TV. I, I was making videos on that channel about four or five years ago. We started making videos again, and we just posted a video Friday on a uh, brewery tour of Bird's Mouth Brewery. So if you'd like to check out that video, that's kind of cool because it's local. And uh, of course, if you do check out any of these videos, I hope that you'll sub subscribe and uh, leave a comment and all that good stuff. All right. Thanks again.